Guy number one who is 5'4", five 5'4", four, five four, and makes 250K a year, or guy number two who is 6'2", and makes 70K a year. Damn. The level one black pill is like the actual black pill content creators online, okay? And you like you listen to them and it's like, man, I'm getting black pilled by these online content creators, okay? The level two black pill are dealing with pretty women and seeing how differently the world treats them and how oblivious that they are to the world. We're like, oh no, like guys are just nice to me all the time and I don't know why. And it's just, you know, that's just, it's just because they like me because of my personality and blah, 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 like really oblivious girls. That's like the level two black pill, okay? Nobody will ever talk about this, okay? But the actual level three black pill, this is the shit that will destroy your mind. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Courtney Ryan, and today we're playing a little game with a group of girls called Would You Rather. So what I do, I give them guy number one and guy number two, and each guy comes with some baggage or some things going on, uh, and they have to choose which guy that they would rather date. So no more to say, let's get into it and see which guy the girls pick. Okay. Courtney, you got a big channel, okay? You're making some decent money here. I'm gonna need you to pay for another song in the background. God damn. Guy number one who makes 200k. Have you tried Adderall? And is the difference as big as they say? Um, I've tried Adderall for real one time, but for me, it felt like getting high. I might have done too much, but it was a very good feeling. It was super chill. It was super awesome. It was an amazing time. Um, however, I don't know if, um, I've heard people say that like the euphoric feeling of doing Adderall will wear, uh, will wear off over time. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Did you feel restless as f No, I felt amazing. Um, but I don't know if I felt amazing because I was calm or because I was really high. But I did, uh, mine was 35 milligrams of the Adderall XR, and it was the chillest day I've ever had in my life. I was chill at lunch, I was chill at dinner, I was chill around people chatting, it was just super fucking chill. But um, it was also like, I felt like pretty high. But, I, but like I said, I think people said that that feeling of like being high or euphoric, that that goes away after like a week on Adderall, that you don't like, um, you don't get that feeling anymore. But I've also heard that for people with like, um, I've heard that for people with ADHD brains, that like Adderall will have more of a chilling effect because it's bringing your dopamine up to normal levels. So if you don't have ADHD and you do Adderall, I think it just makes you like, I think you just get a ton of energy and you're like bouncing off the walls, like restless and shit. I've heard that, I don't know if that's true or not, but I've read that in a few places, but. Okay, but he struggles with infidelity and will have one to two affairs during your life together. Guy one who makes 200K, but he struggles with infidelity and will have one to two affairs during your life together, or two, guy who makes 40K and is loyal. Bro, that's one to two affairs for 200K? That's a huge difference. I gotta, the 200K has gotta be the winner there, right? 200K versus 40 for one to two affairs? Or guy number two who makes 40K and is loyal. I'll do guy number two. Guy number That's cap. We're capping hard here. Number one. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds so bad. The 40K and is lawyer. loyal, obviously. Well, for me, obviously. Ooh, that is... That's an easy one. I guess I'll say the guy number two because I, I couldn't deal with infidelity no matter how much money you make. Loyal. I would choose forty thousand dollars and loyal. Okay. Yes. Loyalty and Stop the cap. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Definitely the guy who makes forty k and is loyal. Um, loyalty is super important and. I could believe if a woman was like the difference between like eighty k and forty k and was like super loyal. Um, I could I could I could definitely see forty k. I don't know if these people work or if they don't know the difference of money, but two hundred k versus forty k. Stop, hold on, another stop the cap. 200K is not that insane in the United States. Dog, $15,000 a month in income, $10,000 a month in, in post-tax income in California even, that would be a high tax bracket. Bro, Destiny, you're not monogamous, bro. It's not about being monogamous. That's just, that's a huge difference in money, my fam. My fam is a huge difference. 
40 K is not that bad. So next one here is guy number one who is 50 pounds overweight and makes 120 K or guy number two who is fit, nice arms, six pack, great endurance and makes 35 K. Ooh. I'm the problem I'm having is that like I'm reading, I'm reading so much more into this than just what's on the prompt because like Let's say that like guy number one is like a funny, charismatic dude. He's confident, he's chill, but he's just like, he's 50 pounds overweight. Then for sure, number one, right? And let's say guy number two is like a douchebag. He like, oh, he works out, but he's like a f***ing, I don't know what job makes 35K. Um, he's doing like some service job. He's like an asshole, but like, it looks nice. Oh, whatever. But like, what if guy number one is like a timid, introverted, like fat tech worker. And guy number two is like, he does like a, like a lower trade or whatever, but he's like, he's fit. He's fun. He's like, cool. I feel like there's like so much more that you can read into either of these. I guess the way that you're supposed to read it is supposed to be like, if all else is equal, right? If all else is equal. If all else is equal, I feel like number one, again, these the money differences are so huge. 120K to 35K, Jesus. Destiny, LOL, didn't your relationships fail because of this, but you make even more money? Wait, what? <laughs> oh my God. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> guy number one. I'll take the first guy. Yeah, 35K, that's like McDonald's. So I'll go with number one. 35K is McDonald's? Wait, how much, do, how much are they paying at McDonald's these days? If you're making 15 an hour, um, 40 hours a week, you're not getting scheduled that, times 52 weeks a year. Is anybody making 30K a year off of McDonald's? Are you really doing that? That sounds really high to me. Yo, real talk, hold on, also real quick. This was, now I don't know if this is true anymore. I don't know if this is true anymore, but this used to be, um, I remember I watched uh, I watched Shkreli do this and I could instantly tell that he'd never worked like service before. Um, and I wanna be clear, maybe things have changed, okay? But um, whenever people would say like, oh, like let's see how much you would make working at Starbucks or Burger King, the easiest way to tell that they never worked those jobs for is because they go, okay, well your hourly wage is $9 an hour times, um, we'll say 40 hours a week. And it's like, mother where are you working that they'll ever schedule you more than 20 hours a week at any of the service jobs. There is a reason why people work two or three jobs. And a lot of people, like a lot of like white progressive, like upper class people like cry like, oh, she has three jobs, blah, 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 blah. It's not like you have three jobs and you're working 120 hours a week. It's that you have three jobs and one job will schedule you to work like six to 10 on a Thursday. And then like, uh, like 9 a.m. to noon on Saturday. That's one job, okay? They schedule you seven hours a week some weeks and then like the other job will schedule you like monday through thursday and you'll be working like two to eight and it's like okay six hour shifts kind of dog shit because a six hour shift is bullshit but okay whatever and then maybe you'll work like some mornings like eight to noon at some other right that's like your part-time bullshit ass work you're never getting scheduled 40 hours a week anywhere you go that's like the dream or 32 higher than 32 i think most places will start paying full-time i don't know if that's changed maybe they've like changed the way that that works now but i always remember that was like the shitty thing of working service before is that like nobody would schedule you for like more than 30 hours a week um you would always get fucked that way <clears throat> but maybe maybe that's uh maybe that's changed now i don't know was it like that at the casino for you no, my casino job was a real job. Thank God, I got scheduled, I, I was working 60 plus hours a week at the casino. That's why I ended up <laughs> quitting school. Um, something like Aldi guarantees 30 minimum. If you're part-time, you're fucked the world must, yeah. But that was back in the day, that was back in the day when I'm, t I'm talking part-time work. Nobody would hire, there's no such thing as like a full-time McDonald's employee, unless you're like a supervisor or manager. But like front of house, well, I guess McDonald's, you're all front of house. What would they call them McDonald's? Just like whatever your, your cashiers and your cooks, like those people are all part-time. Nobody would get hired as a full-time worker there. And, but again, maybe that's changed. Maybe that's changed. One week I worked more than 40 hours and they kicked me out of my shift because I was getting overtime. Oh, if you're getting overtime on a, on a service job, your supervisor is gonna get his ass chewed out. That should never be happening, right? Yeah, they will kick you off of that clock so fast if they think you're reaching um, 
but usually you never even get scheduled close to 40 hours. You wouldn't have to worry about it. That just in my personal experience, let me qualify that again. Cause I already know some fucking retard is like evidence that Dusty hasn't worked in a long time. In my neighborhood, every single McDonald's and Burger King actually schedules you for 38 hours and blah, blah, blah. Okay. Just, this is just my limited experience from fucking 20 years ago. Okay. Maybe things have changed. All right. The fit one. Okay. I make enough money to support us both. <laughs> Gee, damn. Okay. Look at this girl. And you make enough money to support it? That's, the, that's like the danger hair. A little bit. I think this is like red flag hair. I f*** with it. But I know she's gonna probably try to poison me. Fit one. Okay. And she has a lot of makeup on. Girls, you don't need that much. You'll be okay, all right? I make enough money to support us both. <laughs> okay. I'll say guy number one. We can go to the gym together and work it out. What if he didn't want to lose any weight? Would you still choose that one? I guess so, yeah. Okay. That's like hard because like I don't really like I don't really value money or like well I, I guess I value health so like I mean if he's overweight he could always change him so I guess I would say the fit guy okay because I care about health like physical health because I think it yeah the problem is that like between fit and fat even if you say all else equal it implies a lot more about the people right like a fit guy sounds like he would just be more fun to go out and do things with and, and he'd be like a better, happier person. Like it just seems like it'd be better in every way to be around like that. Um, I know it's saying all is equal, but it's hard to feel that in your mind, I think. Yeah, it's just like your well-being. Yeah, just, yeah, I just, I guess that one. Um, I think being fit is um, important. So I, I want a guy who takes care of his health. Um, 50 pounds overweight is really not that bad. Um, <laughs> It's so Especially American. If, like, it's so American. I have a more active Fuck lifestyle, me. so I wouldn't mind helping him be more active. 50 pounds, not that bad. Um, so probably the 50 pounds overweight 50 guy. Pounds. What if he didn't change though? What if he stayed 50 pounds overweight? And he I couldn't change? I don't mind a little. Okay, a little bigger guy, yeah. all right. Guy number one who is a three and has a boat and a second home that's an oceanfront condo, or guy number two who is an eight but lives at home with his parents. Damn, what are the ages here? Guy who is a three? That sounds hideous. <laughs> um, probably the first one. Okay. Um, just because he's doing better in his life. Okay. I'm not really one for appearances. Like, I, I care about physical health, but like... Other a three, though? A three? Other than just like being phys like healthy. I mean, you don't have to be like super like fit or attractive just as long as like you're taking care of yourself but he's obviously taking care of himself in other areas of his life so oh that's a good one um probably the eight who lives at home with his parents especially in times like these um if he's saving his money um who was the some guy um in viewer Collins like a day ago said that he gave like he had a tip for people in chat that if you live at home with your parents um, he said that all you have to do is tell girls like, oh yeah, I moved back in because of COVID or some shit. And apparently that excuse works with shakes, which is kind of funny, but it's true. I don't see why. I mean, obviously it would be better if- a Wait, is this a, this must be a joke, right? Women only like going in and doing things because they're whores and want other men to lust after their status. Literally there's something special about going out and materially. Everything you can do, you can go out for, you can get better shit by buying it and bringing it to the f home. That's gotta be a troll, right? The guy had his own place. Um, a boat would be nice too, though. <laughs> but uh, I'd, I'd go with the guy who's an eight and lives at home with his parents. <laughs> guy number one. All right. She's honest. Yeah. Mm. That home with parents, that's tough because you don't know what somebody's going through, but I'll stick with the three and I'll come back. That's hard. It depends on circumstance. Okay, so that would change things for you? I mean, it would only if, like, because, like, do they just not have motivation? Or is it more so... <sighs> See, that's hard. I yeah. would do the three. The three? Okay. Yes. Ooh, that's tricky. Um, I'd say the second guy. Okay. Because that doesn't have to be forever. <laughs> right. And how old are you? I'm 28. 28. So is yeah. there an age where living at home with the parents would be a deal breaker for you? I'd say, you know, life happens and, you know, if you need help, you need help. But typically, by the time you're 30, maybe it's time to get on out of there. All right. <laughs> Ooh. I'll say, 
I'll say guy number two. There's still time to move out. I feel like we're still young, so I understand that. Okay, and how old are you? 21. Okay, so if you... Would you say there's an age where living at home with his parents would not be... Or would be a deal breaker for you? I feel like around age of like 25, 26, that's like a relative age where I feel like a lot of people... I, I don't know for Courtney. I don't know if I like the decision for her to have her own microphone and to not pan it off to the side at all. I'm not sure how I feel about the presentation because I feel this weird thing where when I'm watching this, this might just be me, but when I'm watching it, it feels like Courtney is like a voice inside their head and then they're like responding to the person talking in their head. I don't know if I agree with that, with that style of presentation. It just feels a little strange watching it sometimes. People are getting their lives together. So if you're still living with your parents, that might be a bit of an issue. Okay, so if that was the case, then would you choose guy number one? Like, I feel like she's like the voice speaking in their head and they're like responding back to the camera to the schizo voice in their head. I would choose guy number two. Still? Oh, who is guy number one again? The three that has the boat in the second home in Miami. And oh. then guy number two is an eight, but he lives at home with his parents. I'll say guy number one. Okay, <laughs> if the guy was like 26. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Okay, guy number one who is five four, five foot four and makes 250K a year. Or guy number two who is six two and makes 70K a year. Damn. Five four. Man, she's really just going to the extremes. It, six two, that's a good man size height. And 70K a year is a good wage. I'm saying number two on this. I think most people would go for well, two. Well, I'm 5'10", so 5'4 oh, yeah. is a little too short for, <laughs> for me. Sure. As, I mean, if you're 5'4 and you're super confident, that's really sexy, but 5'4 um, is, like I said, I'm 5'10", so 5'4 is a little too short for me. I'd prefer a taller guy, um, especially when I wear heels. I like wearing heels. So you're choosing guy number two? Yes, guy number two. You know, a lot of girls, they're short, and they still have these crazy height expectations. But mm -hmm. when you're 5'10", it's like, can you really be mad? Right. There's really not that many people right. or there's guys not a taller lot of, than me. There's not a lot of girls who are 5'10". Like, if anyone's going to be picky, I feel like it should be you. Mm -hmm. Would you date a guy who's shorter than you, though? Um, as long as he's super confident, like I said, I'm going to wear heels. Mm -hmm. So if if you're confident, and I, I really like confidence, if you can rock it and you're not insecure about it, then heck yeah. Perfect, all right. Five, four, 200,000. 250. Six, oh, 250. Mm -hmm. Or 6'2 and make 70. We might go for the 6'2 guy. 6'2, how yeah. tall are you? I'm 5'1. Okay, so <laughs> even though the 5'4 guy is still taller than you, you would still choose the 6'2 making less money. Yeah. Mm, probably number two. Six foot two guy? Yeah. How tall are you? Um, five, six. Okay. So would your answer change if the five... This is, um, one of the real... Okay. Here's, like, the level one black pill. Okay, are you ready? The level one black pill is, like, the actual black pill content creators online. Okay? And you, like, you listen to them, and it's like, man, I'm getting black pilled by these online content creators. Okay? The level two black pill are dealing with pretty women and seeing how differently the world treats them and how oblivious that they are to the world. We're like, oh no, like guys are just nice to me all the time and I don't know why. And it's just, you know, that's just, it's just because they like me because of my personality and blah, 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 like really oblivious girls. That's like the level two black pill, okay? Nobody will ever talk about this, okay? But the actual level three black pill, this is the shit that will destroy your mind, okay? This is the shit that will destroy your mind is you can find guys that are like black pilled about themselves that you would kill yourself if you could look even half as good as they do there are so many guys i've seen that are like tall handsome good jawline relatively lean like looks really good like holy shit and they're like yeah like no girl ever talked to me like i'm blah 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 and it's like bro are you serious that is the, if you ever have the chance to meet some of these guys, these are the ones that will destroy my mind. It's like, bro, you have everything in the world going for you. Are you f serious right now? That you're gonna pretend like you can't get laid? What the f I four guy was like a little bit taller. <clears throat> I see, I hear too. And this is like one thing that I've always said too, right? If you're a guy and you're not getting pussy and you think it's because you're short, if you're like five, seven and above, that's not what's going on. And, and 
you're on some stolen valor shit because guys that are legitimately like five, five and below, those are the guys that are actually starting to run into trouble where it's like, fuck. I think my height is becoming like prohibitive in terms of getting girls because average female height is about 5'4". When you're starting to get into like height where you're like 5'4", five, 5'5", five, five, that's like some tough shit. And when you've got guys that are out here that are like 5'9", and are like, oh, I'm just so short, no girl's gonna be like, bro, shut the f up. It's because you're a f loser, okay? No, you're 5'8", five, 5'9", five, dude. No girl is not f you because you're too short. Unless you're running into like the very rare, like I want a super tall guy or like the 5'11", like volleyball, uh, you know, college basketball player woman or some shit, you know? If he was your height, would you ch still choose the 6'2 guy? I don't know. There's something about, like, I, people in my family are tall. I just happen to be the short one, you know? <laughs> so I typically like taller guys, just, like, a little bit taller than me. Okay. So would what's the shortest guy that you would date? Mm, I'd say probably, like, 5'8". I, there's just something about taller, taller guys that I like. Okay. Um, Probably just the taller guy. Again, I don't really care about money, so that's not really, like... That's really not a factor in it at all. So I guess taller if I had to pick. Okay. Because I'm five nine, so I'm pretty tall for a girl. I was gonna so. ask. I thought you were taller. So. Yeah, Jeez. I'm five Where's nine, all these so five would be pretty short. Volleyball players yeah, at. Would yeah. you date a guy who was shorter than you? Yeah, I will. Yeah, I would. I mean, I my I dated a guy. We were the same height. Okay. Like exactly. So I mean, I guess it's not the same. Did you thing. still wear your heels? I don't wear heels. No? no, I hate heels. Okay, like, so it doesn't even matter. So it doesn't even you. matter. But I mean, I would, yeah. I'm not like superficial like that, but if, if I had a choice, yeah. like, I guess I would pick the taller one. Right. Oh, guy number two. How tall are you? Five foot one. Oh my gosh, so you would still choose the six two guy? Oh, for sure. <laughs> my boyfriend's six four. Jesus. Whoa. Oh my gosh. Okay, so you would rather have the tall guy than the guy who makes more money? Yeah. Okay. And what is it about the tall? factor that stands out to you? I just feel like taller guys, I'll feel more protected because I'm so short. I want a guy where if we're out and like a situation happens, he can for sure protect me. Okay. This is cap. If you're a woman, you gotta unprogram your brain from saying stupid shit like this, okay? You're never choosing people because you think they're gonna protect you better in a fucking street fight. You're choosing them because they're just more aesthetically appealing to you, okay? It's a, there's nothing wrong about saying that, okay? But just like, be honest. None of this like, oh, like he, like, oh really? Like, does your boyfriend do MMA? Like, well, come on, the out of here. Okay, and what is the shortest guy that you would date? I would say maybe like five foot eight. Mm, maybe six two. Okay, and how tall are you? I'm five two. Okay. So I guess I can't be too picky. <laughs> right. But if you had to choose, you would choose the taller guy versus the guy who makes more money? Maybe, yes. Okay. I gotta go for the taller guy. How tall are you? Five three. Oh, okay. So even though he's still taller than you, you would still choose the really tall guy? I'm always in heels, so I'm going to be taller than him. <laughs> okay. Would you ever date Damn. a guy that was shorter than you? Damn, five two guy, oof. Shorter? Oof. No. What about your height? I could make it work. Okay, if you absolutely had to. Yes. Okay. Next one is guy number one who is a four, but pays for everything, is a provider, and you don't have to work, or guy number two who is a 10, but you're the breadwinner? One. Yeah. <laughs> oh, for sure, guy number one. Okay, you don't want to be the breadwinner? I'm going to make money, but... I wouldn't mind not having to be the breadwinner. Okay. Number one. <laughs> I do not mind being the breadwinner. Okay. Um, if he, you know, the four, I, a guy who pays for everything, obviously that's really nice. Um, a guy who I'm with, I don't mind paying occasionally. I think that's like a good, I think holding guys to that standard of having to pay for anything, mm -hmm. everything is, um, maybe I shouldn't use the word toxic, but I think, there should be some give and take. Okay. Um, but like I said, I don't mind being the breadwinner, so I'll say the 10. Okay. And I still make all the money. So attraction to the person in this case would be more important to you than the money? Yes. Okay. Um, the first one. Okay. Because, yeah, like I said, I don't really care about looks, but also I'm kind of like old fashioned and like I kind of do think that a man has this, like men and women have certain roles and, um, yeah, I think a man should like kind of be more financially stable. I guess in like a committed relationship. Yeah. Like as opposed to the woman being the breadwinner. Also, I have a lot of like passions and hobbies, so I think that'd be really cool if I could just stay home and pursue them. <laughs> that is such a weird thing. 
I have passions and hobbies, and I want to stay home and do f arts and crafts while my husband's out working. F you, motherfucker! What the? F These are the type. By the way, what this woman just said. This is what the red pillars want. This is who they're programming you for. Okay? They don't want masculinized women that are out there working. They want these types of women in the world. This is what they go for. Okay? Remember that when you guys are out here capping about how much you hate women like this. Okay? I think this is gross. Okay? I want a career woman that's working hard. Okay? This weird cuck shit. This is. If you're a red pillar and you want women like this, you're actually a cuck. You are cucking yourself out to your to your woman's lifestyle and hobbies. You're at home, or you're, I'm sorry, you're not at home. You're at work, busting your ass off, paying for shit, trying to provide her for a good life, and she's at home cucking you with her arts and crafts and hobbies and all the fun friends and family that she's gonna hang out with. Okay, while you're stuck at work. All right, that's the true cuckoldry. Okay, that's the true cuckoldry. Um, so I guess that one. Okay. I'm the breadwinner. Okay. Jesus. Maybe the the first guy. The four. Who will support, who will support me. Okay. Yes. You care more about that provider kind of mindset versus... Looks. It's like I'm an independent woman, but later on in life, you know, if there's a family down the line... Yeah. And I'm going to be taking care of kids and whatnot, I would like someone to take care of me. Got it. Yes. Got it. Guy number one who is 54 years old making 170000 a year. Or guy number two who is 30 making 45000 a year. Every single one has to be choosing guy number two here. 54? Courtney, I think it would have been more interesting to say 44 or 45 or maybe even 40, but 54? Everybody's got to be going for number two here. 54? Um, no shot. See, I don't really care much about age. I've I've dated guys that have been like older than me. Older and fifty-four, are two different things. And stuff. Okay. Um, What's the oldest guy you dated? I, think, I gotta think. <laughs> Stop the cat. Somewhere in their forties. I don't think I've gotten up to fifty before. But um, okay. how so old is she really again? Care about that, but also. Uh, I does it. Is, is it dating or marrying? Just whatever you want for yourself. If for you dating, I guess it doesn't really matter. I guess I would pick the older one because he makes more, I guess. That sounds superficial. But for marrying, probably the younger one just because we're more, we'll have more time together without sounding too hard. <laughs> without being too morbid. <laughs> yeah. What it, when it, uh, somebody else is watching, they said, the red shirt girl doesn't care about money, age, appearance, or fitness level. What does she actually care about? <laughs> uh, okay. Um, Probably the 30 year old, I would prefer a guy closer to my age. I don't think the 54 year old would. If he's like my dad's age, I think that would be a little strange for me personally. I mean, some girls are into that, but probably the uh, 30 year old would. I would give myself about a 10 year gap. Okay. And so since I'm 28, like 38 doesn't seem out of range. Okay. As long as they have like a young spirit and they're like, you know, able to keep up with my youthfulness. Yes. Then I'm fine with it. Perfect. Wait, did she say the 54-year-old, as long as they can keep up with her youthfulness? A 10-year gap. Okay. And... How old is she? Hold on, I gotta listen again. One second. Strange for me personally. I mean, some girls are into that, but probably the 30-year-old. Uh, I would give myself about a 10-year gap. Okay. And so since I'm 28, like, 38 doesn't seem oh, yeah, out okay. of range. Okay. As long as they have, like, a young spirit and they're, like... Never mind. That's, that's You know, able okay to answer. keep up with my youthfulness. Yes. Then I'm fine with it. Perfect. Okay. So 54 is just too old. Yes. Okay. I would do the younger one. Younger one? Yes. What is the, like, age cap for you? Like, what is the oldest guy that you would date? Um, I think early 30s. Okay. Yes. Okay. Guy number two, not into older men. Okay. What is the Damn. oldest guy that you would date? I would date a guy who may be at most 10 years older than me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Woman moment. Uh, so I'm 22. My boyfriend is 31. I'm not into older men at all, though. Sorry. F shouldn't say woman moment. That's bad. I'm sorry. But that's kind of funny. You're 21, so 31. All right. Guy number two. I don't want my dad and boyfriend to be in comp competition, you know. What is the oldest person that you would date? Mm -hmm. And how old are you? How, I always forget. Um, how old am I? I always forget. She's about to say some shit like 23. 28. Okay. Oh, okay, okay. Eh, that's a, okay, okay. You can get better. All right. Um, probably oldest, probably like 40. Okay, so 54 is a 28, little, gotcha. bit of a stretch. Yeah. 54? Yeah. God. 
Number two. Number it's two. Okay. For me. Thirty years old. Yeah. What is the cap you think for like age? No like, cap. What's the oldest you would date at this point? I'm 22. So okay. I'd stop at like 36, 35. I okay. Go and that's still a pretty big jump. Like yeah, 54. still. Yeah, 54 is like, pushing it. Yeah. All right. Guy number one who is a nine but can't satisfy you in the bedroom, or guy number two who is a five but you have a great sex life. Ooh, for the red pillars, the answer is always one. They want the hot. I can't. I couldn't believe this debate. I think I've had this conversation a few times now, where the guys that seem to obsess over sex the most just want to bang a hot chick. They actually don't care how good she is in bed, and all of the red pillars gravitate towards number one for the male side. I don't know what the women will say. I would imagine two, but I'm not sure. We'll see. I feel like for men, there's like, <clears throat> if we rate like how good a sexual experience can be, like I feel like for guys, it's like, like this is the worst and this is like the best, but for women, like this is the worst and this is the best. Like most guys will get their nut, like most guys will come. And I think that's all that a lot of guys actually care about. And as long as you f bust, like most guys don't give a f anything else or it seems like it in the conversations i'm having while these people like most guys don't give a f whereas with women um with a woman like a bad sexual experience can be really bad i don't necessarily mean rape i just mean it could be really 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 horrible um whereas like it seems like men are always good at like getting theirs at least you know my mom married my dad at 35 when he was 55 same income got divorced after a year though so rip damn i'm gonna go with the nine okay and not so great sex life um I mean, I feel like those go hand in hand, so that's hard to answer. Right. Um, that's such a f***ing virgin answer. That's such a crazy thing to say. She's so wrong. Holy shit. Attracted to someone. Yeah, you would, you would that, hopefully. Yeah. Like five as far as looks or like? Yes. Nah, the nine. The yeah. nine? Danger okay. hair girl. Number Stop two. linking their Instagrams. That's so okay, weird. She's in five? Yeah. <laughs> and then this one's a little bit different, but guy number one who would be your husband making 60,000 a year or guy number two who would be a sugar daddy that gives you 15k a month. Jesus. <laughs> yeah, I'm not into all that stuff, so just <laughs> okay. the husband. Can I have a sugar mommy? Or guy number <laughs> two who would be a sugar daddy that gives you 15k a month. <laughs> the husband. Yeah, I'm not into all that stuff, so just <laughs> okay. the husband be fine. Guy number one, 60,000 isn't too bad. Okay. Okay, so you'd rather have the committed loyal husband versus the sugar daddy side piece type yeah. of situation. All right. Ooh, <laughs> that would be nice. <laughs> but I think long term, probably guy number one. Okay. Yes. I can make fifteen thousand a month, so we're gonna go with that. Damn! What do you do for work? That you're making fifteen thousand a month? Please share with us. The husband, Better, like commitment, and okay. family. Perfect. Yeah. Mmm, <laughs> that's a really good question. <laughs> oh man, okay, so either husband making less or sugar daddy. Mm -hmm. Oh, man, both good, both, like, everyone wants a husband, but also wanting oh, a sugar daddy, man. Um, hmm. If you've got to think, the answer is the sugar daddy, if you have to think about it. No, I'm gonna go with the husband. No yes. shot. Guy number one. Stop the cap. <laughs> so you choose the husband and the commitment versus a sugar daddy. Yeah. The husband. Husband? Yes. This yeah, girl is sugar sick. Daddy, okay. He's expecting something from you. You know, it's not yes. just giving it. All right, guys, that is all I have for this video. If you liked it or found it helpful, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel to be in the loop for when I release new content. If you like this style video and want me to continue bringing women on my channel, let me know what you think down in the comments. Let me know what questions and topics and different things you would like me to cover. As always, thank you all so much for watching and I will see you all next time. I'm a lesbian and so I'm definitely taking the sugar daddy as long as I don't have to put out. I've known a few girls I feel like I don't know many that have done the sugar daddy thing, but I feel like most of the girls that I've met that have done shit like that, the guys didn't expect them to put out. They were just looking for like companionship, as weird as that is. Um, they just like wanted somebody to talk to and like hang out with, <laughs> which is, I don't know if I want to say that's sad, but it's kind of, yeah. <clears throat> I've actually heard that from a few people too. Um, like a lot of the older guys that are paying for like escorts and stuff, they're not just paying for like crazy wild sex or whatever. They typically just want like some kind of like companionship, like somebody to talk to or chill with. I thought that was like a meme, um, but now I've heard it repeated enough 
uh, from other people that I'm thinking it's probably true. I get the sense that the cap of a woman's pleasure from sex is way higher than what a man can feel. Um, no, I don't think that's true. I just think most men don't pursue like good sex because they just don't really care about it. They're just trying to like bust. 